Good evening and welcome to the June 25th regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Education. I would ask you to please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and first order of business, Secretary McFarland, will you please take attendance? Yes, President Singer. Here. Vice President Branstad. Here. Treasurer Frazee. Here. Member Baker. Member Blasey. Here. Member Friedel. Here. We have six members present. Great, thank you. All right, moving into item two, we have the consent agenda. We have three items. Uh, item 2.1 is approval of the minutes from June 11th, regular meeting. Item 2.2, is uh, staff members that have announced their resignation. And item 2.3 is the approval of payment of the school system's bills for the mo month of May 2018 as listed in the checked register. Would anyone like any of those items removed from the consent agenda? Seeing none, I will take um, a motion. I will motion, uh, entertain a motion for the consent agenda. I'll move so moved. Okay. <laughs> Support. Moved by Mary and supported by Scott. All in favor of approving the consent agenda items 2.1 to 2.3, please say aye. 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 All opposed? And the consent agenda passes. Moving into item three, we have the Board of Education Matters and uh, item 3.1 is for action. We have the final budget amendment. Mr. Cooper? Uh, good evening. I'll draw your attention to the screen. Not very many slides, so hang in there. But we have really, if I could remind you, uh, two things that we have to do this evening. We've gone through our workshop. We did our proposed budget, uh, excuse me, 18-19 budget to the board, and our public hearing was on June 11th. And tonight we need board action. And the first thing we're looking at is the uh, final uh, budget amendment for 17-18. And I'll go over that in just a second, and then we'll ask you to approve uh, the 2018-19 budget. Uh, always works this way, and as you know, even when we uh, give you the final estimate on 17-18, once the audit comes in, that will be the definitive final one. And, and again, uh, we try to get close, but there's a lot of variance at the end where people do or do, don't spend uh, money that they've reserved aside. So, okay, so what you're looking at here uh, the three columns takes you back through 1718. So the very first column, far to the left, that's where we started back in June of 2017. Um, that's how much we thought we'd have in revenue, expenditures, our excess variance, uh, and our unrestricted fund balance, and what percent that was. The middle column is March. That's when we revised it. If you remember, we come in, and in <clears> March we revised the budget and changed some things, and you can see that the revenues had changed, and so had the expenditures. That's, by the way, that middle column is the column we get to work off when we're developing the 18-19 budget. We don't have this last column, which is your final uh, amended part until uh, after that budget's already come to the board, because we're still working on both budgets at the, at the same time. Um, what you'll see if you look in that last column, uh, the difference between the March and the June estimate, uh, you'll see the revenues up slightly. I think it's about 60,000. That's not much change. That's usually just a slight change from one of the grant funds out of the state. And you'll see expenditures down about uh, 440,000. Uh, again, not a great amount for the size of the budget, but that has everything to do with like purchase services and instructions that didn't get done. And so that might be you know something they had planned to do but didn't do, or it could be, uh, I know for example, I was looking at special ed para, uh, pros, the budget for that for their salaries came in a little less. So when you see those uh, expenditures change, it's really, that's our variance. You've just seen it ahead of time, and it's items that since March uh, the different budget groups are not able to spend. You'll see we're looking at excess revenue about 2.5 million. Uh, if we get a 1% variance on top of that, even though historically it's 2 to 3, it does jump around, so we usually use 1 to kind of predict where we'll be. And you'll see that our surplus looks like it'd be $3.3 million. Unrestricted, remember, we always talk about this. There's a fund balance, uh, but in our fund balance, we do have gifts that have been given to us that are restricted. And so I try to show you the unrestricted part that's back there, and you'll see that that looks to be about 
uh, on June 30th, uh, 15.6 uh, million, which is about 19.5% of the expenditures. Um, I would say just a couple of things here as you look at the differences going forward. Um, the biggest difference always, especially when you're looking at the fund balance, is we are actually starting one budget before we know the ending fund balance of the previous years. So really the biggest jump usually happens between that first June budget and the March adoption because that's when we actually know where we're starting from. Mm -hmm. And in this case, um, if you were to go back and look, uh, the fund balance started about $2 million higher than we ever thought it was going to start when we put the budget together. So that's one of the adjustments you see. That's more in the fund balance part. Um, you'll see the expenditures, of course, and revenues fluctuate depending on, again, as we take more money in, a lot of that comes from grants. So we have uh, equivalent expenditures going out at the same time. So that's going to be the final amended budget. Uh, there was a copy in your, your board packet of the budget itself and the most recent uh, breakdown or summary of expenditures. And that would take a, a roll call vote for you to, to approve the final amended budget for 2017-18. Okay, I'll accept a motion for item 2.1. I move we ex um, accept the amended 2017-18 final or final budget amendment. Support. Moved by Angela, support by Patrick. <clears throat> Is there any discussion? Seeing none, uh, we'll take a roll call vote. Is that right, Bob? Yes. Roll call vote. <clears throat> okay. President Singer. Aye. Vice President Branstad. Aye. Treasurer Fritzy. Aye. Member Baker is not hit here. Member Blazy. Aye. Member Friedel. Aye. I also vote yes. We have six yes votes. Great. Thank you. And that is unanimous for the approval um, of item 3.1. Moving into item 3.2 for action, we have the approval of the 2018-19 general operating budget. I'll change one more slide there and, and turn it over to Mike. That is just a summary of what we presented the last time. And so with that summary, if you recall, um, we are asking you to approve a budget that has revenue over expenses again, probably not as uh, high as we did this year. Um, but we are expecting a slight student decline in enrollment. And um, with the raising of the fund balance will assist us um, quite a bit with um, increasing payroll. We are all time low at our payroll, with, especially with staff turnover we've had the last three or four years. And so you're at the low side of that payroll and it will only go up from there. Uh, we also know that we need to continue to do capital improvements and capital purchases as, as well. So um, Bob did a great detailed job of explaining this budget to you. Um, and again, the process, as you know, is this is an estimated budget with um, student count not known, um, some, some grant dollars not known, and it will be adjusted as we go. So we are looking for approval, and this, we would also recommend a roll call vote on this. And I would entertain a motion. I move for approval of the 2018-19 general operating budget. Support. Moved by Angela, supported by Mary, and we are open for discussion. Well, you did a thorough job uh, a couple weeks ago with the budget, and we asked questions there, and I feel we got all our questions answered and appreciate all your hard work. We'll go into a roll call vote for this. Okay. President Singer. Aye. Vice President Branstad. Aye. Treasurer for Z. Aye. Member Blazy. Aye. Member Friedel. Aye. I also vote yes, and we'll note that Member Baker is absent. Great. Thank you. Moving into item 3.3 .3 is workers' compensation insurance. Mr. Cooper? Yeah, this is also the uh, time of year. Uh, if you remember a year ago, we bid out insurance, workman's comp. Until that time, we had been self-insured. Um, so we are recommending that we renew with Bone and Bailey Insurance of Middle Michigan. Um, the cost uh, renewal amount is $80,914. That is roughly $8,500 cheaper. If you uh, know much about the workman's comp, it's then uh, based on the actual group experiences. So the different employee groups and how that comes in will affect that workman, workman's comp. When you have good years, good things happen. And when, when the other way goes, then it goes up a little bit. And I included their um, uh, bid summary in your, in your board packet there. So it's the uh, same company we went with last year after bidding that out for the first time. OK, great. Thank you. I'd entertain a motion. I'll move we approve item 3.3, 3, 
the workers' compensation insurance policy with Bone and Bailey. Support. Moved by Scott, supported by Patrick, and we're open for discussion. I think they've done a great job uh, for us, especially um, working with our staff. I understand they help us out, kind of hold our hand through the entire process when and if there is a claim, and it's really nice to see the premium drop by $8,500 from one year to the next. So hopefully we continue that trend and um, everybody stays healthy and no comp claims. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of work went into it last year when we were debating switching. Yep. Okay, very good. Um, we do not need a roll call vote for this, correct? Okay, all in favor of approving workers' compensation insurance, uh, please say aye. 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 All opposed? And it's unanimous. Okay, we're moving into item 3.4, which is the Midland Community Stadium, Stadium Soil Stabilization. Mr. Sherrill. As you're aware, we um, discovered a few years back some issues at the stadium <coughs> and the grandstands. Um, it appears that the cracking of the concrete through the years has allowed water infiltration and washing out the soil underneath. We saw a lot of soil rising up and coming through, and so there's a lot of hollow spots in there. Um, they are recommending that we inject the grout type material that will level it, fill it, hold it. Um, I think they tell us about five years, maybe seven years, that would be a fix, and then we probably are looking at replacement of that. Um, we had this ready for you a month ago, and then with the legislative change on prevailing wage, um, a few um, districts were caught in a gray area where the bids had already been submitted under the old legislation, but not accepted under the new legislation. So we took that back per the legal opinion, um, worked with the three bidders that we had, um, and having them adjust their um, bids to um, come in line with the prevailing wage. Um, the low bidder remained the low bidder, and so we are recommending Hardman Construction on Ludington at $183,000 to stabilize the stands there. Um, kind of a specialty, um, as you can imagine, trade, and so we were lucky to really to get three bids, and so we were pretty happy with that. Looking for approval. Great. Thank you. And I will entertain a motion for item 3.4 uh, for Hardman Construction of Ludington, Michigan, uh, for the bid of $183,000. So moved. Support. Moved by Scott, support by Angela, and we're open for discussion. Will this happen this summer still? Yes. Um, very quick. I think they actually want to get in there right away. If they, I they, would like, they would like to get in there right away. They'll have access, if anyone's noticed, uh, East Lawn there is going to get tore up here pretty quick. And I so that, yeah. uh, we'll still have access to all our parking lots. It's just not going to be a real through road to go through on, so they would like to get going on it as soon as possible. Is there any warranty on the product? I know you said five to six years, but do they guarantee anything on that? I don't recall. I don't right recall now. that being the uh, guarantee. I mean, other than talking with how long it typically uh, lasts. Um, I, would just I don't think, think there's some the kind of workman's that I material, remember. but I don't know. Okay. Do you remember FFO committee? I don't remember. I don't remember either. No, but. I don't. This is a short-term fix to give us a little more time yeah. so we can uh, come up with a long-term plan. I don't know plan. that we'll go the full five to seven, but we certainly, this uh, stabilizes and gives us some time to look at the whole stadium. I, you know, I think we all would like to do more than what was originally designed for that stadium if possible as well. So, Okay, then. Uh, Were there any qualifications at all? I mean, the, anything obvious on, the, on their proposals? Anything that varied from what we asked? Yeah, the low bidder is using a um, alternative material, um, but still meets the spec and approval from um, the architect or engineer. Yes. Okay. Did they give any kind of information or knowledge to us? That I know they want to get in there right away. I imagine the size of the equipment is going to do some pretty good damage. That. We have, do we have to subcontract that or we self perform to fix all of the ruts and grooves and say, or reseeding and grading or anything? Because I imagine this is like pumper trucks kind of it to is. inject the, the, the grout material in there, which is going to be a, a little bit of a mess. It is part of the, I think you would call it 
in your profession performance, um, but it is expected over their performance to clean up after themselves, I guess. Okay. But we'll probably have to grade and seed and restore that kind of stuff to... It's probably a question I didn't I, ask. I, I don't think so. I think when we were talking about that, it should be left close as to as is, uh, is what I, I was going to use I the terms. To um, that would be something that, uh, of course, we have to inspect their work when they're finished, too, to make sure it's left in that condition. Um, it was my understanding uh, that that would be taken care of as part of it. Okay, great. I'm done. Any other questions? No more questions? Mm -mm. Okay. Uh, we will take a vote on item 3.4, the soil stabilization then. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? And the ayes have it. Moving in for, um, to item 3.5, Project Lead the Way, sixth grade Chromebook purchases. Um, are you going to take this? or? Sure, we have, do have Dave here, so we always have Dave when we come to technology to support us on, on these uh, questions. But um, so the uh, middle school, um, when we did their one-to-one, -one, and they went with laptops. And so, um, as you know, we've gone to Chrome. Chromes are uh, easier to control. Uh, when they go home for safety. So right now the, the middle school laptops stay at the building, a little bit of an issue for some of the parents. Um, and so when our project lead array requires the, um, the preferred device would be the Windows laptop platform. And so we are going to purchase Chromebooks th for, through the STEM technically for Project Lead Away, but we're going to place them at sixth grade and move the laptops to support the Project Lead the Way. Um, the laptops being older will not be used every single day as the Chromes would be as well. And so that'll start our transition in the middle school to Chromebooks each year. We'll begin to add a grade level and then we'll be Chrome all the way across the district as well. So you have that um, recommendation at, at 167,400,000 um, to purchase those computer, those devices. Great, thank you. I'll entertain a motion for item 3.5. So moved. Support. Moved by Mary, supported by Angela, and it's open for discussion. Is anyone else amazed we could buy computers for $279? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I know there's a lot of sixth graders that'll be excited to be able to take their Chromebooks home. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. A lot of parents too, yep. yeah. And, and kids are used to that at the end. Uh, right, it's being in giving them the mm -hmm. progression from elementary school. I just had one question. I know that some of the project lead the way, um, they still needed to have the iPads to run some of the programs, is that still going to be true? So that's at the low, and Brian was the expert here, but it, I believe that's at the lowest level in the elementaries, and we still have those going for a while. Yeah, we're going to have a hybrid of devices for a while operating. Um, as far as I know, and Dave follows this religiously, um, we are still operating some of the VEX programming on our iPads at the lower levels, and we're cart-based to be able to make that happen. We also are purchasing Android tablets as well through some of the STEM grants that was below what our threshold was for board approval for some of our upper level courses as well too. Uh, we have heard the rumor that uh, it's all gonna move to the Chrome platform, which would be preferable, but right now there are still some of the courses that require just a touch more horsepower in their devices, which is why we're gonna be hybriding for a while. But Dave and his team are great about following that and working with Project Lead the Way, but I think for at least another year, maybe two, we're gonna have a hybrid of devices to be able to support with our ultimate goal of Project Lead the Way moving over to all Chrome devices by the time that we're fully vested. I like the idea that the, those sixth graders are going to still have that, that Same computer. Same platform, yeah. yeah that that's that's kind of how we chose that, yeah. you know, versus it's going exciting. to the eighth grade. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Very good. If there's no more questions, we'll move into a vote. All those in favor of approving item 3.5 for the Project Lead the Way sixth grade Chromebook purchase. Say aye. 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 All opposed? And it passes unanimous. Moving into item four, we have request to address the board. And since we have nobody in the audience, I believe uh, we'll be able to move right into item five. Item five is curriculum instruction and assessment. 5.1 is for information, textbooks. And sure. 
uh, before you this evening, you have five different novels, four of them for Spanish one and two, and one of them for French one and two. And those are before you tonight just for the informational period. They'll be outside of my office for review for the next uh, period in between our board meetings. And the paperwork is there as well, too. Uh, as these are specialized novels, um, these are written in native language. And so forgive me for not pronouncing them for you this evening. I'll def defer to our curriculum specialist, Scott Cochran, if you're really looking for intricate details, as he has read translated versions of those to make sure that content is appropriate. Um, um, and applicable for the course as well too. So this is tonight simply for information and we'll come back to you at the July board meeting for official approval of those four new novels for our Spanish one and two and French one and two courses. Great, thanks Bren. I'll entertain a motion. This is just for information. Oh, just information. oh this is information, sorry. Yep. Can, can yeah. I just ask a question? Sure. Are, are the translated versions available for us to read? <laughs> the, yeah, Scott can get those for you. Good cool. question. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Moving into item six, 6.1 for information again, our gifts. We have 10 gifts tonight uh, at the very last board meeting of the last fiscal year here. So it's very nice, $10,780.09. Uh, they range from the Kiwanis giving some money, boosters clubs from both Northeast and Jefferson. You'll notice somebody has donated money, the food scholarships, to help pay for balances at the end uh, mm -hmm. at, at Seabird. Um, robotic team contributions from uh, parents and businesses, uh, some from the Boosters Club, and then you'll notice there's at the very end there three uh, from the Midland Youth uh, Action Council at the Midland Area Community Foundation. And those are ones that uh, different buildings wrote for uh, with that committee to get those. I do have one item, 6.2, for your action because of the size of that. There was a gift totaling $10,000 uh, given for, or towards, I should say, because it does cost more than $10,000 to put in a new PA system. But they're gifting $10,000 for a uh, new uh, gold gym PA system at HH Dow, and that's from the uh, Boosters Club out there. But that does require your action because of the size of the, the uh, gift. Great. I'll entertain a uh, motion for item 6.2. So moved. Support. Moved by Mary. <laughs> Support by <laughs> Angela. <Finally. laughs> so let's hear some discussion then. Yeah, the, it was so needed. So needed. <laughs> so needed. We ate pl places in that gym you could not hear a dog on things. Exactly. So it's, it's great. Yeah. Okay. All in favor of approving item 6.2, say aye. 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 All opposed? And a big thank you to the boosters at Dow High and all those who donated um, to the Midland Public Schools. We have item 7.1 for information. We have letters to the Board of Education. Item 8 is scheduled activities for information, our um, following Board of Education meetings. And that moves us to item 9, which is study discussion sessions. So I will open that up to Angela. All right, well, given how it's only been two weeks, I don't have much to say. I do have one story. When we were talking about Project Lead the Way, I actually um, have a Kettering Co-op student who just finished her work term in my group. And um, she had to give some presentations at the end. And actually, I will now be her mentor for the rest of her college career. She just finished her freshman year. And she kept telling people that one of the reasons she went into engineering was from the project Lead the Way that she had done in her high school. Oh, wow. And so, of course, probably a lot of other people may not have even known what that was. But it really stood out to me when she was doing her end of the work term um, presentations. So that is all I have tonight. Good. Thank you. I uh, just want to say thanks to Bob and Lori and everybody involved in all of our budgeting and forecasting and look forward to audit, audited numbers and moving things forward. That's it. Thank you very much. Great. No comment from me. Excellent. Uh, last week I w had the pleasure of going on an outreach trip um, out to Kentucky and we had 46 students from Midland Public Schools that attended that and 13 different adults. And I was just so impressed by 
the the students and you know so so often you you hear uh, folks might compare you know this generation to that generation and I tell you what these students were amazing and it was fun to work with them they're such hard workers and um, I always get a chance to talk about school and they talk about school and uh, just great comments and compliments to to Midland Public Schools but uh, huge kudos to these students and and all the parents that jump in to get involved and uh, really mentor students along the way so I counted up the developmental assets that they built in one week time and uh, it was 22 <laughs> they worked on 22 developmental assets so I was pretty excited about that I wanted to uh, touch base and talk uh, to Kristen McDonald about uh, before and after school care just to see uh, what we can do to make sure that we don't have um, parents that are left in a lurch with no uh, before and after school care. Also, uh, just a shout out for Youth Connection magazine. We have a new mag magazine, so I hope our parents are taking a look at that. And that's all I have. Um, just happy summer and um, Take advantage of all the uh, activities that, that our community provides for kids. Don't let them get bored. Um, library looks great. Grace Haydow Library is just wonderful. And uh, my grandson and I went there last week, and it was just a blast. So it was good to be back in there. So take advantage of those summer programs. If kids aren't reading in the summer, they can actually fall behind. So we want to keep kids reading. I don't have much tonight. Just looking forward to watching the construction at Chestnut Hill and Seabrook this summer. Um, as we go towards fall. I have a vested interest myself, so kind of curious to see how <laughs> yeah. this all goes. I watch the trucks by my, by my house every day, so it should be fun. That's awesome. Mike? A um, couple of quick things. Uh, we have um, school safety set up for the fall, so we're going to be doing some training called ALICE. If you have heard that acronym before, it's Alert, Lockdown, Inform, Counter, Evacuate. That will be kind of a new process for us because we've been predominantly a shelter-in-place um, strategy, and so um, we're very excited that that also will be provided to us by Midland PD. And so we have them on board, and they're, they're going to become our uh, security providers and PD going forward. But Dave has also um, been able to um, uh, get us up and going on Crisis Go, so it'll be very soon that we'll be uh, introducing that to staff. Um, basically, Crisis Go will allow us to communicate in a much quicker fashion and go into a lockdown with a consistent message going forward. It has a lot more pieces behind that, but that will be the initial stuff of Crisis Go. Um, I'd also like to point out Cindy Young is gone, so this is unusual for Cindy. And so we have Rita filling in, and so Rita's done a wonderful job getting t tonight's meeting up and going for us. So thank you, Rita, on that piece of it. Um, we did get a little bit of a construction update today. It, um, it went, has gone very well so far at G Seaver and Chestnut Hill. So clean out was quick. Um, uh, the, the destruction, I guess you might say, of the buildings were very quick, and um, they're already into uh, um, about 75% of the asbestos is being removed, had been removed already. So we're ahead of schedule on those two buildings run, running forward. But you know it's a race to August to get those teachers back into those buildings. So... Um, the report was very, that it's gone very well. Woodcrest's addition, um, rough, it's pretty much closed in the envelope completely around it, um, and then there'll be in interior work, and then that parking um, that going in the back, and they, ex they expect that to be done like mid-July, so Woodcrest will be fully done as well. So we're, we're moving pretty quick. We also know that Adams and um, the HVAC work for Dow High was being reviewed today by the engineers, so we're getting ready for that next year of work um, coming forward as well. So, And that's all I have. Great. Great meeting. I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Support. <laughs> moved by Mary. Support by Angela. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting's adjourned.
We don't go this casual, even though it's the same.